Cotton Wood Meet, we have Nadia Tetwa, the Minister of Arts and Culture, and Rejoice Mabudafasi, who of course is the Deputy Minister. They will be discussing with Peter building a better Africa and a better world through arts, culture and heritage. I hand the broadcast over to you, Peter. Leanne, thank you very much indeed. And a very warm welcome to all of you if you've just joined us. So we're here in Woodmead, just north of Johannesburg, for the latest in the series of New Age Business Briefings brought to you by the SABC and kindly sponsored today by Transnet, making sure that these conversations continue to happen. So, the 25th of May, 1963, that was uh, saw the continent bring together all the nations uh, and uh, the, African, the Organization of African Unity came into being. And uh, that was, I guess, the first sense or opportunity for the country to start uniting, the continent to start uniting. It later became the um, African Union once the decolonization process uh, happened. And uh, we started to focus on the new ambitions for the continent going forward. So every May 25 is Africa Day uh, in, on the continent, and a lot of the countries uh, celebrate it with the public holiday. And more recently, we've started to have Africa Month uh, during the course of May, and South Africa has been no exception to this. And this year's theme has been building a better Africa, building a better world. And the question today is, how do we do this using arts and culture and heritage. Well, to help us with that conversation, I have a panel of esteemed guests, uh, diverse politics, education, and uh, youth uh, to talk to us. But we also look forward to your thoughts and your comments at Morning Live SABC is our Twitter handle and also hashtag TNA Biz Brief. But let's uh, get this conversation off the ground and welcome our guests and introduce them to you, starting with the Minister of Arts and Culture, uh, Natim Tota. Very Pleasure to have you on the program, as always. Thank you so much. My pleasure, Peter. Next to you, uh, Deputy Minister of Arts and Culture, may I rejoice, Mabudafasi. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to you. Thanks for the invitation. Uh, next to you, celebrated author, playwright, and poet, um, Nobel Prize winner, um, educator. Thank you very much for joining us, Professor Wallace Oyinka. Welcome to you. Pleasure. Uh, singer, songwriter, <coughs> social activist, um, Simpiwa Dana, always a pleasure to have you. Welcome to you. Thank you. Uh, also, another proud voice of the continent, educator, Professor Kole Omotoso. Thank you so much for joining us and welcome to you. It's a pleasure to be here. And uh, next to you is uh, the youngest member of the crew. I don't remember being your age. It was that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> Um, Mfundo Khadebe, and Mfundo has uh, been a youth ambassador since he left school, and that's literally just about a year ago. Yes. But he's on his way to Harvard University on a full scholarship in September, August. So very excited to hear about some of the things that he's been doing in between. And hopefully uh, when he comes back and uh, he's uh, grown a beard or something, he'll, <laughs> <laughs> he'll lead this country. So to our panelists, thank you very much uh, for leading this conversation. Uh, Minister, let me start with you. Um, Africa Month, it comes to an end uh, tomorrow, day after. It's been a busy one, but building Africa, building the world through arts and culture. Tell us about this month, the initiatives, the idea, why, and has it been a good month? Well, thanks, uh, Peter. Firstly, uh, I want to start uh, by actually showering with felicitations, uh, the forebears uh, of our continent, um, the founders of the Organization of African Unity, who had in mind the unity of Africans in Africa and, and, and the diaspora, but also acknowledging uh, what would have happened before that in the build-up to the formation of the OAU. Um, and, and, and casting our eyes into the future. Because OAU did what it was supposed to do. Uh, that is the decolonization of our continent. Uh, most of the countries today in, in, in the continent are, are free, perhaps with the Western Sahara as one uh, remaining colony. But we today uh, have moved uh, to AU, uh, which developed a program, uh, um, 20, AU Agenda 2063, which is about prosperity of the continent, 
uh, peace and development. And ours, uh, since last year, was to make a contribution, firstly as South Africans, to connect properly with our continent. If you talk to many South Africans today, if they visit uh, uh, Professor Shoyinka uh, in Nigeria, they will tell you that I was in Africa last week, you see, yeah. coming from South Africa. It, it's, it's a mindset thing. But we are in this journey of our discovery of our national identity. So the past month, we've sank, uh, we've exposed ourselves to different cuisine of the, of the continent, uh, we've danced, uh, and so on. Uh, we will end up with engaging in what we call festival of ideas, um, shaping our thinking about the continent. We will end up with uh, the film, uh, of course, and there are many others. Uh, and most importantly, it would be the first uh, film on Mandela, uh, played by uh, Africans and South Africans, uh, after about nine films on, on Mandela. So Mandela's gone. So I'm saying, we are using all at our disposals in all genres of arts, of culture, of heritage, to realize the goal of a better Africa and a better world. But the program itself is not about arts and culture. It's, it's broadly about South Africa and the leadership of uh, this country deciding that let us make our contribution for Africa's regeneration. All right, a lot to unpack and we've got quite a bit of time to do that uh, during the course of uh, the uh, conversation. Uh, Deputy Minister, let me turn to you. Um, and, and I'm looking at uh, your clothing and uh, the colours and I suppose it's symbolic of uh, some of the... Um, icons, uh, uh, symbols that a continent has uh, that we can hold on to, particularly during a, a month like this that bring us together as a, as a continent? Yes, actually we are saying that we don't have to dress this way when we're celebrating. Mm. Eh? It should be every day we must celebrate our lives, our history, our culture, and then, you know, to bring this education to this generation and to generations to come. We must be proudly ourselves. Uh, this goes a long way to bring back, you know, our culture. We bring back food, as the minister said, could be our tires, but, but also how we live. And the more we bring back our culture, it will make us love our country and rebuild our continent, Africa. All right, we'll explore that as well and much more. We've got a lot of heritage sites as well that we need to celebrate and sort of bring into our consciousness. Um, Professor Schoenke, um, I'm interested to know the role of arts and culture. And I know that you've written many things that have annoyed some governments uh, in your time. But I guess that this is the contribution that the arts and culture can contribute into changing society and contributing to society. Your thoughts on the role of arts and culture uh, in building the continent? Well, <clears throat> I find myself very often um, a little bit um, concerned about uh, the, the concept which many people have about what art and culture are. Um, Many people, for instance, and I speak partisanly, many people think that uh, soccer is all there is, or sports, all there is to uh, arts and culture. And um, I'm at great pains to say that if governments uh, just uh, devote about a, a fraction of what they spend on sports, I'm saying this in South Africa, I know that South Africans are crazy about sport. I can't help that. Uh, but, but, I always tell some of our uh, uh, money people, for instance, that if they just give the arts, the arts, just a fraction of what is expended on, uh, on games, uh, sports, etc., uh, that the artists themselves, the, the real producers of art, just by functioning with sufficient support in their field, which is a their main occupation anyway, they'd be astonished how communities are built right across nations, even without the intervention of governments. Just recognition of the fact that the arts are not a poor sibling of, um, of the leisure occupations of any society. 
the arts are not uh, foundlings uh, at whom the leftovers of soccer uh, funding should be thrown, or rugby for that matter, since I'm in South Africa. I think that the artists themselves, by creating commun communities across, which exist right now, but by strengthening those communities, they'll find that um, the kind of uh, passages across peoples on the continent would have been you know, uh, established. All right, fantastic. Thank you very much for your opening thoughts and comments. Uh, Sampir Dana, I guess you echo those kinds of sentiments uh, about the role that uh, arts and culture can play. Um, but I know that going even further, language is also quite important for you. Um, well, yes, um, language is a repository of culture, so it's extremely important. But uh, I don't necessarily think that... Um, okay, can you hear her? Yeah, okay, can carry on. I don't think that uh, necessarily um, a, a specific language is important, just as long as it's an African language, because then it holds our worldviews as a, as a race of, of people. I, I know that um, also people believe that Africans are very, they're not homogenous. We are very different in many ways. But there's enough um, proof that we, we hold a lot of similarities. And therefore, if we could perhaps focus on those similarities, we would get to unity quicker than we are doing at the moment. And uh, on that note also, I'd, I do want to express that as a musician, it would be so much quicker to unite the continent if we would have cultural exchanges across the continent where we lobby our governments to create quota systems for African music in general um, in, in their different countries. Okay, thank you very much indeed for your opening thoughts. Um, Professor Omoto, um, Omotoso, um, African unity. What, what, what can the artists and the, um, I guess the people that are at the forefront of what we see, what we hear, and what we read do to help build Africa uh, in, in the hope that, that that's what we're trying to do? Um, I think in the first place, the people who hold the infrastructure that reaches out to Africans and Africa are not the artists. The artists seem to find their own way of reaching uh, you know, uh, the communities that they need to reach. I think what we need is a very uh, serious commitment of infrastructure by our governments. I think for the first time, we really need to ask our governments to speak to us in our languages and begin to deal with the issue of exchange, transportation, carrying across of our cultural products, and especially in our languages which speak to one another, which play with one another, in which vocabularies, words occur that you will find in a door and you find in easy closer or you will find in easy zone. We need to spread these things. And the only people who can provide the infrastructure are these governments. We cannot ignore them. Okay, again, thank you for your opening thoughts. Uh, Mfundo, you're young, uh, you've got the whole world at your feet. And um, you're actually following a journey that many of us did, and it's to travel, go abroad. But what's happened with a lot of young people is that they've ended up staying in those countries in the diaspora. Um, and some have tried to come back, but us old people <laughs> have gotten in your way. And I'm just wondering, what, from a youth perspective, as a young person, as a youth ambassador, what would you like to see in terms of creating opportunities for you to be able to help shape this continent? Um, I think that's actually an interesting thought. I think young people are caught in this time frame where they're stuck between history and moving into the future. And essentially, I think looking back when young people do travel abroad with the intention that they will bring these skills back to Africa and South Africa, then you know they are sort of told why would you want to return to the dark continent? Mm. That is the image that is portrayed to us as young people. And I think that there's an intersectionality that happens between arts and culture and heritage and moving forward into the future as young people. 
So I think that we need to then explore how we can further teach young people about their culture and about their heritage so that they can understand that moving forward into the future, it is not bad to be an African and that in essence, we are not complica complicating the process of being involved in the economy or surviving as young people um, with our culture. Mm -hmm. And the whole idea of Agenda 2063 is, well, something that we're going to run, in fact. Mm. Yeah. And we certainly look forward to it, uh, listening to you right now. And I just hope the politicians don't get in his way. <laughs> <laughs> we have for the future, mm. that uh, we, we have uh, people like um, Fundo in the program we call Young Patriots. He's one of the people who will be venturing into foreign lands armed with national consciousness. Because it's not about reading and becoming a bookworm, but it's first and foremost understand who you are and how you make your contribution for this better Africa we are, we are talking about and a better world. And we believe that it, it can't be that uh, you um, have young people uh, who would be influenced uh, by the, uh, the African pessimism which is out there, but go out and shape the world to look at Africa from a different perspective. And these are the kind of, of people we have an obligation to further train and deepen their consciousness. All right. I'm going to jump around a little bit, but just before we go to the break, I'm going to come to you, uh, Professor Shoinka. Um, we often talk about the progress that's, that Africa has made, and we have made progress, no question, but I get a sense sometimes that maybe we could have been further along. And, uh, and the reason I'm asking that is that why aren't we further along? because maybe that can give us clues to the kind of things that we could be doing going forward. I think the problem is that um, in many instances we're being pulled in uh, contrary directions. Uh, on the one hand, there's a kind of fidelity, um, a fierceness, a commitment to the pres preservation of the arts and culture of the continent. On the other hand, I think there's been a lack of courage of firmness in examining just what that heritage is from which we draw inspiration and material for our arts. Africa is not an exception, but there are certain retrograde uh, aspects of what we call culture. And commitment, and or rather a failure to examine those retrograde uh, aspects, uh, to analyze and be selective uh, to simply say, oh yes, this is our culture, this is our, therefore, it is valid. I think that's that negative direction which uh, prevents a movement, a real adventurousness in, uh, in the art world, art productivity in the nation. I've already mentioned, of course, the lack of, uh, shall we say, structured. You mentioned structured, uh, I agree with him. You mentioned the lack of that. But then there is, in fact, the material of art and culture <coughs> itself and our refusal very often to say we can't touch it simply because it's the tradition. I think mm. that militates against a real creative adventurousness mm. in many instances, not in all, but in certain societies, yes. All right, we're gonna take a quick break, but just after the break, I think just picking up on what you're saying to interrogate some of these traditions and uh, heritage uh, icons. I'm going to ask uh, Mayor Mabudafasi to talk to us a little bit about patriarchy because that's contributed to some of the drama that we're facing. All of that after this. Stay with us.